In this video, I'm going to show you how to hook up your Invertec OptiDrive E3 for your 2x72 belt grinder. Alright, I just want to start out with a really quick disclaimer. I am not a licensed electrician. Improper wiring of your VFD or motor could cause injury such as death or destruction of your property as well as the VFD, the motor, it could burn down your building. So. Make sure that you do it right. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. If you misunderstand or misinterpret what I show you and you kill yourself or destroy your property or your VFD or your motor, I am not responsible. So now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into the video. The first step in hooking up your Invertec VFD is to make sure the power is off. Now, most of the time you wouldn't even have this plugged in. For this purpose, I do because I'm, you know, wanna get everything spaced out. I've confirmed that the power is off and the plug is wired correctly. So. It's important to run fuses when you're running a VFD, so that way if you overload the drive, you don't damage the drive. Um, it's just a simple bit of insurance to protect your investment. So you start by putting <clears throat> your first leg into the fuse and simply tightening down the lock screw. Insert the second leg into the second fuse and tighten down the lock screw. Now, insert the ground wire into the green uh, port marked ground. Tighten down your lock screw. Okay. Now, take your little jumper wire here and you're gonna go out the bottom of the fuse bank into the top of the Invertec. So I'm gonna hook both these up first down here and then we'll hook them into the top of the VFD. Now you don't have to have this type of fuse block but the reason I like it is because, you know, it's easy to swap your fuses in and out whenever without a lot of effort. All right, let's hook up the second leg of your 220 volts. If you have access to 220 volts, it's always um, better to go with that if you can than 120 because it's more efficient. So now we're going to hook leg L1, L2, and frankly, it doesn't matter which one is which. Um, <clears throat> in this instance, the Invertrek drive will operate regardless. All right, tighten down your screw. And insert leg two and tighten the locking screw. At this point, your drive is powered up and ready to use. Once you've finished wiring your VFD and you're ready to start programming, simply remove this little uh, cheat sheet card from the VFD and on it you will find instructions for wiring your, your on, your forward reverse, and your potentiometer. On the other side, you have a cheat sheet that helps you go through the basic setup, which I will show you at this point. So, you start off, hold for two seconds, go to parameter one, and you set your maximum frequency. Now that's based on what your motor nameplate says. And hold for two seconds, um, go to parameter two, Set your minimum frequency. Go to parameter three. This is your ramp rate, how many seconds it takes to get to 100%. The next one is your ramp down, so ramp to zero, how many seconds it takes to get to zero. 
Parameter five is your stop mode. So if it's set for if it's set for zero, you are going to ramp down to a stop. If it is set to one, you're going to coast to a stop. Six is energy efficiency mode. I have that turned off because that's more for fan motors and that type of thing that run at constant speed for a super long time. I run mine at different speeds and apply different amounts of load, so that's not an optimal. So option number seven is motor rated voltage. So 230 volts, that's correct. Setting number eight is the motor rated amperage. So you set this. Now, one nice thing, this VFD is rated for 10 amps, um, where the KVAC 27 and 29 are not. So this VFD will handle more amperage load than the competitors. So number nine is the motor rated frequency, which is 60 hertz. In my case, number 10 is the motor rated speed, which is 3500, which is weird. Uh, most of the time they're 3600. I don't know why this iron horse from Automation Direct nameplate says 35, but I'm gonna follow the nameplate because that's the best practice. And parameter number 11 is low torque frequency boost. This is something that's really nice. So I've got a boost set at five. So basically when you turn this way down and your belt's moving slow and you apply pressure, you have almost no power. Well, this allows you to boost that. Now I would not boost this value very high unless you have fuses because if you boost this value too high um, without fuses, you could damage your VFD or your drive. The next setting is, what are we on, P12? So 12 allows you to either operate this with these right here, which would be switches on a remote control um, extended box um, and your potentiometer, or if you want to control it with a keypad, let's say you know you don't have your switches yet, you haven't wired up your, your box with your potentiometer, you can run it directly from the keypad. So you have two options from running from the keypad. Option, oh, well, you have more than that actually, but the two I'm gonna talk about is option one, uh, basically allows you to power on and then change the speed up and down and power off. Now, if you wanna be able to go both directions, you have to go to parameter two. Now, when you hit the green button, it will start and you change the speed. You hit the green button a second time and it reverses direction and goes the other direction. When you want to stop, you hit stop. So I've been running on two. Now, for this to work on two, you have to loop jumpers one and two together, which is fairly simple. You simply take a small piece of wire and you hook it to one and two, and that powers the unit on. And at that point, you can control the speed of the VFD with the start, stop, and the speed buttons. Option number 13 is for industrial pump or fan. You don't want pump or fan because industrial is the best setting for uh, belt grinders because it's uh, basically the setting you would use for variable speed and variable torque. And number 14, if you choose to open Pandora's box, you can open setting 14 or parameter 14 and you set that to 101 and now your total number of options opens up to four, like four pages of, I think it goes all the way to 50 of different parameters. And those parameters include things like um, ethernet hookup, um, it includes things like, you know, when you start after have been, having been stopped, what RPM is it gonna go to? Is it gonna go to the previous? Is it gonna start at zero? Is it gonna start at a specific one? You can also set up four different uh, speed settings. So if you have speed setting one, speed setting two, speed setting three, speed setting four, you can have those pre-programmed and hooked into buttons. So as you select different buttons, you get different automatically pre-programmed speeds. You can hook this thing up. Like it's ridiculous. It's pages and pages and pages of extra options and features 
beyond parameter 14. So if you are like a super tech guru, go ahead and enable the advanced settings and it's mind blowing, okay? I'm not gonna cover that because that's, a lot of that is over my head and I don't need any of those features. So I'm sticking with the default 13 uh, parameters and that is basically um, the OptiDrive E3 in a nutshell. Can I use an IP20 rated VFD on my 2x72 or 2x48 belt grinder, or any belt grinder for that matter? The answer is yes. Um, there's a lot of internet think out there that says you have to have outdoor VFD in order to use it for your 2x72 belt grinder. But I'm going to tell you, you don't need that, okay? These run um, just fine. Um, when you look at the belt grinder, see, you can remote control the uh, your your speed control and all that stuff and move this out of you know right next to the grinder you can have your on off your forward reverse your potentiometer everything in a sealed box right next to this thing if you want and frankly you can get a cable that's puts that vfd on the other side of the room and you will never see the vfd ever and, and it can be in a clean area in the shop that is completely away from um, your belt grinder. So you don't need to spend the money on getting a, you know, a outdoor or wash down rated VFD. They're just, it's overkill, it's not required, and the KBAC 27 and the KBAC 29 are ancient technology. Um, the tech is older than me and I'm 36 years old. There's no point in going back to the Stone Age for a VFD. Um, now, I know I've offended some of you, and you've probably, probably clicked away. I apologize, but it's too late. They're already gone. <laughs> hey, we interrupt this video to talk a little bit about the 2x72 belt grinder from Bex Armory. If you're interested in building your own 2x72 belt grinder, we've got a solution for that. At Bex Armory, we have a full set of detailed prints showing how to build every single piece on this belt grinder as well as assembly prints. So, we have metric and imperial designs, and those are available at bexarmory.com. I will leave a link in the description to the plans to build this belt grinder. Super simple and requires no welding at all.